So following on from yesterday's video, we're going to continue the theme of theories alongside the storyline breakdowns. Yesterday we had a look at how Raquel could use Scrappy in the next chess move if Unique does think he's dead, similarly to the way Kanan disguised himself as Slim. But in this video, we're going to look at Jukebox's story arc and character, how she suffered her first real loss, how it's going to impact her, and the theory of how this could push her into taking someone away who Kanan loves, and that's Davina. And I'm also going to link this back to this moment in Power, where we saw Jukebox holding her gun at Tariq's head as well, and what we saw play out in Power. And I'm going to go really dark with this theory, and dark with Jukebox's character towards the end of this video. But I still don't think Nicole's death is going to be the major turning point for Jukebox's character, because I do think she's going to suffer a lot more heartbreaks and setbacks over the course of raising Kanan. But we're going to run through a story arc and the theory of her killing Davina in this video. But of course, if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But let's run through what we saw play out with Jukebox's story arc in the last episode and how it could lead her to killing Davina. Now, her love for Nicole has been evident ever since episode 1 of Raising Kanan, when we saw them together for the first time. Nicole was someone who Jukebox could be open with, someone that would give her this taste of living a normal life. And this is something that a lot of characters have wanted in Power, they've wanted to come out of the game something we saw Jukebox telling Nicole in episode 7. She said that she was going to stop boosting and it was Nicole's influence that led her to not wanting to continue this part of her life. We even saw Jukebox completely coming out of her character as Juke, becoming Laverne. Her facial expressions completely changed just like we saw her in this scene when she was putting on her suit for the ball at Rack's house. And the real issue is you can never escape this life. Many characters have tried and failed in power and Rack also mentioned in episode 7 that she has a vision of one day passing down the business to Lulu so she can come out of the life, just collect checks. But the life that they live, which Juke described as a fucked up life in the episode 8 trailer, contributed towards Nicole's downfall. The mix of weed and crack that she smoked in episode 6 when she came to Queens for the showcase gave her a taste of this drug and her fate was then sealed. And after Kanan had passed Juke the Bad Batch of Crack, which Nicole stole from her, we saw her drop dead at the end of episode 7. And this is going to be a real heartbreaking moment for Laverne in episode 8. And I say Laverne because this is who she was with Nicole. Nicole bought the Laverne out of Jukebox. For example, when we saw them singing together in episode 3, this is the shy, the caring, and the loving side of Juke. And the note that she left for Jukebox in her bag is going to be the last time she reads or hears from Nicole. And she really is going to be heartbroken. This is what will probably push her into leaning on Detective Burke's shoulder a lot more. But I don't think this is going to be the only heartbreak that Jukebox is going to suffer because I do believe we're yet to see the ultimate reason as to why she stopped her music career and what pushed her into becoming a cop because it's way too early for this to happen. Jukebox only became a cop when Kanan had already served two years of his prison sentence and no doubt Juke's mom being introduced in season 2 will play a key role as well and this could be another harsh lesson for Juke. Maybe she only comes back into her life because she realises how popular Jukebox is becoming and here's how she's blowing up the music industry with the Streets in Nigga Body song being a major hit. Because from what we know from Jukebox's mom's character description, she left when Juke was a very young kid and ironically to pursue a music career in LA which seems like it didn't quite work out as planned. So I do question her motives on coming back to New York and re-entering Jukebox's life at a moment where Jukebox could really be blowing up with a music career under Crown and Lulu's music label. But the key issue here for Juke is the cause of Nicole's death and there were a lot of people in the comment section who blamed Kanan for her death but there were also a lot of people who blamed Nicole as well. And although Nicole should have stayed in her lane, Kanan deserves his fair share of the blame because it was his bad batch of crack that killed Nicole and I think Jukebox would see it this way too as well. And his way gets real interesting because even before the death of Nicole, I said a while ago that I think Jukebox would be the one to kill Davina and not Kanan. And after episode 7, it just makes me think even more that Juke is going to be the one to kill Davina. So let's have a look at the theory of how and why Davina could catch a hot one from Jukebox. Now Jukebox is going to be devastated. She may not be able to think clearly at first because of Nicole's death. But as the dust starts to settle and as she starts to gather her thoughts and as she realises that the crack that Kanan gave her is gone and missing and replaced with a note that Nicole left her, she's going to realise that Kanan's crack was responsible for her death. And in time she will return back as Jukebox and it may be difficult for her to come out as Laverne again because only Nicole could bring the side out to Jukebox. She may only feel comfortable coming out as Laverne to Detective Berg for example. But as the dust starts to settle and as she starts to come to terms with Nicole's death, she's going to start looking for answers. Because that's what people do when there's a sudden death of a loved one, which wasn't ill health related. You don't quite understand how and why they've died so suddenly, so you start searching for answers. Because you just want to understand what happened, you're trying to figure out the cause of the death to give you some sort of closure. And once she realises that Kanan's crack is to blame, she could very well think that Kanan took Nicole away from her. And this is why Jukebox could take Davina away from Kanan. An eye for an eye, a loved one for a loved one. You took a loved one away from me, so now we're even. But this isn't the only thing I want to run through. I want to go even darker with this theory, and even darker with Jukebox's character, with her potentially being the one to kill Davina. And first of all, I want to connect this back to power, and how I would really love this to play out in the final episodes of Raising Kanan. 
Now in power, Jukebox's original plan was to extort Ghost using Tariq for as much money as they could and then kill them both. And even throughout the scenes between Kanan and Jukebox in power, you could really see Jukebox always used to control the narrative, she used to control the conversation and she used to control the plans that they made. Kanan had this fear of Juke with what she could do and how savage she really was. And when Kanan made it clear to Ghost, who really was holding Tariq, you saw the fear in his eyes. This is a face that tells you that Ghost knew what Jukebox was capable of and that she wasn't someone who was messing around. She was very well capable of pulling the trigger on Tariq. And when someone like Tommy Egan calls you a crazy bitch, you know Jukebox was someone who made a name for herself in the streets back in the 90s. Now Jukebox forced Kanan into telling Tariq who he really was and what his real motives were for becoming close with him. And I'm sure if Kanan hadn't pulled the trigger on Juke, then she would have pulled the trigger on Tariq. So coming back to 1991 and the timeline of raising Kanan, Jukebox is someone who clearly doesn't like Davina. You could tell from the very first episode that she's someone that didn't like the way she'd been playing Kanan to the left ever since first grade. She knows that she couldn't be trusted when she's the one who gave up the location to the stash house as well. And how we saw Jukebox holding the gun to Tariq's head in season 4 of Power in front of Kanan, what if she did the same thing to Davina in 1991? Because it would clearly make sense as to why we saw so much fear in the eyes of Ghost and Kanan when they saw Juke with a gun to Tariq's head. Because they would have known what she's capable of killing Tariq because she's done it before. She's tied Davina up in a chair, forced Kanan to tell her how he was the one who really went after Buck 20 and was the cause of his death and how much of a no good motherfucker he is. Because of Nicole being taken away by the drug that Kanan cooked, Jukebox then pulls the trigger on Davina and takes away the person that Kanan loves and shoots Davina right in front of Kanan. It could also then start to make sense as to why Kanan did eventually choose Tariq in the end and choose to kill Jukebox. He may never have figured in Jukebox for what she did back in 1991 and how she took away a loved one from Kanan. And once Kanan pulled the trigger, Kanan told Juke that she was always running her mouth. So what did Juke run her mouth about back in the 90s? Now this would then be the catalyst for us to really see Juke turn into this dark and savage character that we saw in power. Leaving Laverne behind with a double life dying with Nicole and her killing Davina. Juke tying Davina to a chair and pulling the trigger right in front of Kanan really would be a dark moment but also the catalyst for Kanan's character to change as well because we really can't go into season 2 of Kanan being the same old naive character that we've been seeing all season long and although I've been enjoying the build up to the characters even I don't think I could take another season of Kanan being this naive again so Davina's death is something I feel needs to happen whether it happens at the hands of Jukebox or someone else. So that's how I would really love it for it to be played out because it certainly would be a dark moment, not just in Raising Kanan, but in the Power Universe as a whole. But it's just a theory of how I would love Jukebox to be the one to kill Davina and how I would love it for it to be played out in the final moments of the first season of Raising Kanan. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Could we see Jukebox being the one to kill Davina, with her then telling Kanan, you took Nicole away from me, so I'm taking Davina away from you. Drop all your comments down below in the comment section and of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.